we as a society should be able to say who comes into our country and who doesn't. It was really quick. Within a week, a week and a half, they deported him. And I threw myself on the floor and I was just crying, screaming. Even though Trump is saying we're deporting bad hombres, well, sadly, they're deporting good hombres too. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. If America has a slogan, it would be that from the Statue of Liberty. But you don't need me to tell you that Donald Trump got elected, in part, on a platform of deporting some of the very people who came to the country under that banner. So I'm in Houston, Texas, where there are half a million undocumented immigrants. And I've come here to ask if what the Statue of Liberty stands for still applies. We're gonna call Dad in a little bit, okay? First, I want you to meet the Escobars, Rose, Walter, and little Carmen. But really, it's the person who's not here that I'm gonna tell you about. Jose Escobar, the children's father and Rose's husband, lived in Houston for 17 years, and every year, because he was undocumented, in order to stay in the country, he reported into immigration. Jose would answer a few questions, and they'd let him go. This past February, when Rose went with him to his appointment, she was told he was being detained. Well, I ran in, and he was surrounded by five guys. I'm like, honey, what's going on? He goes, I'm so sorry, Rose. And then Carmen was reaching out for Jose, and Jose was like, Rose, just please leave, because I don't want Carmen to see me like this. And he's crying. I'm like. Jose, look, don't sign anything. He just hugged me, and I hugged him, and I said, please be strong. He goes, you be strong for the kids, and I said, I will, Jose, but just. Are you ready? Let's go, tiptoe to Panda. A week Panda. later, Jose Escobar was deported to El Salvador, where he's living with his grandmother. Jose hadn't stepped foot in the country since he was a kid. As long as we were together, we were okay. But now, he's far, far away. You want to bring me your tablet, Walter, so we can call Daddy? Rose was born in the U.S., and so were her kids. She puts a brave face on the situation, even though now she's the only breadwinner. Bobby? Yeah, we're not trying to call Bobby. No. Oh, there we go. See, now we can see Bobby. Hi, Dad. Hi, Carmen. Yeah. Say besito, papi. Besito. After school, they call Jose, thousands of kilometers away. Walter. What? Come here, I'll show you. Let me show you a trick. And he still tries to help Walter with his homework. Okay, how's the trick? Come in your block. Mm. Uh oh. <laughs> what just happened? Hello. Hello. Can you see oh, us? Hello. Hello. Can you see us? Soon after Jose was deported, Rose told Walter what happened. Her childlike explanation with the politics stripped away might be something we could all learn from. The simple story of a boy crossing into the U.S. for a better life. Daddy came into the United States when he was a little boy and he didn't ask for permission. And he goes, so is daddy a bad man? I'm like, no, because you know how you do things, but you don't know any better because you're a little boy. And he goes, yeah, I'm like, same thing with daddy, he was a little boy. Now that he's a man, he's trying to do the right thing. <laughs> and that means not sneaking back across the border. Rose tells me that Jose could be back tomorrow, illegally. But this time when he returns, they want it to be for good. What? Say 100 in Spanish. Paint the cinco. Paint the cinco, no. Cien. No. Cien. Cien. Yeah. It's okay, I'll teach you. We'll that sentence, so it's okay, I'll teach you, okay. hangs there in the Escobar living room. His, um, It'll likely be five years before Jose can return legally. When he was deported, what kind of things went through your mind? The first thing that came to mind is the president is changing everything now. Oh, I'm sure. I'll figure it out. I'll ch I know how to do all that. Okay, so here's the next thing I want you to have a look at. 
There's the Texas flag on the wall and the people on the phones. In Houston, they helped get Trump elected. Meet Cooper Jackson. He works at a car wash factory in Houston. And he tells me when the wall is built, he wants to work there. I'm the silent majority. I'm the, uh, I'm the person who's been waiting for someone to, to get into politics and, and, and make the impact that he's made. Trump is 10 steps ahead of everyone. If you could say something to Donald Trump, what would you say to him? I love you. I love you and thank you very much. I really, I, I don't regret voting for you. Are you planning on voting in this upcoming election for Pasadena ISD? Cooper might be in love, but he's certainly not complacent. That's excellent, sir. He works the phones a couple of times a week trying to engage with voters. Well, you could always switch, ma'am, if you decide. I hope you have a great day. Goodbye. So yeah, I mean, I, I definitely see the value in doing this. I just He's one of the people who's know. changing America. We have a Trump group that wants to go, like, protest the socialists and, like, go wherever they go and protest them, and I feel like this is better than doing that. Hello? How do you see yourself when you're here making phone calls? Like, how do you think of yourself? I think of myself as a happy soldier. I think of myself as uh, someone who wants to make a difference is in the right place. What's the soldier part? Once you decide that you want to be a soldier for America and you join, you're basically going to be fighting in whatever war they decide to get into when, while you're a soldier. So that's why I say I'm a happy soldier. I'm already in, enlisted in the Republican Party. I just got to do my part to fight the fight. If I say illegal immigrant, what do you think about? What's the first thing that pops into your head? When you tell me illegal immigrant, I think of someone who should be punished. I think of someone who broke the law. I've broken the law before. I've been punished for it. We, as a society, should be able to say who comes into our country and who doesn't. We, as a, as a country, should be able to say, I'm sorry, we don't want your beggars and your criminals. We want your doctors, and we want the people that are going to benefit, or that are going to benefit, but they're also going to give back to our society. <laughs> That's not exactly give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Here's the next situation I want you to see. This is what uncertainty looks like. All over Houston, all over America, in fact, if you're an immigrant, you're hiring a lawyer. You want to do this in English or Spanish? Rayed Gonzalez tells me he's never been busier. You tell me, in Spanish or English. What do you see in your lobby? A lot of scared people, individuals that are here legally in the country that have nothing to worry about. Um, are afraid that they're going to take away, for example, the legal permanent residency in the country because nobody knows what Trump is going to do. Every time he goes on TV, he continues to say, I'm deporting criminals and, and uh, traffickers and this and that. But what we're seeing down here um, is that is anybody that may have had any type of problem with the law. And the official statistics bear that out. Immigration arrests are up almost 40% across the United States to nearly 400 a day. But Ryed believes just because something's legal doesn't make it fair. They just don't get it. Besides, he says, the 11 million undocumented people in the United States have accomplices. American gave them the jobs. We, we're, I'm an American, I'm at fault too. We give them the jobs to come here. And they have stayed here all these years because the government was not able to take them all out or deport them. They bought houses and we sold it to them. We, we let them get loans for cars. We, we, we educated their children. A lot of them are U.S. citizens born here. They have all these ties and now we're going to tell all these people you need to go? I mean, come on, it, it's unrealistic. It, it really is. Before Trump, if you were undocumented, you were almost American. You could work, raise a family. After all, there are six million children, most of them U.S. citizens, whose parents don't have papers. Now those families are looking over their shoulders. What exactly does that look like? Meet the Rodriguez family. Juan Francisco left El Salvador and slipped into the United States without papers. That's the only crime he's ever committed. Now at 47, he works as a mechanic. Juan Francisco shows me the document that proves for the last 11 years he's been checking in with immigration. His final meeting was in February. Y, 
no más. Este, me dijo que me iba a detener. Pues le dije yo, este, estoy en tus manos, no puedo hacer más. Tú, tú tienes la última palabra. Si me vas a deportar, este, ¿hasta qué punto es posible que me des una, hacerte una petición? Y me dijo este, que cuál era. Le dije yo este, que mi hija se graduaba este año y que si me daba la oportunidad de estar ese día. Immigration officials granted Juan Francisco his wish. He'll be at Karen's graduation. But after that, he was told he'd be deported. I don't want my graduation to get here because once graduation comes, then his time gets closer to leave. And it's more of trying to live every day to the fullest because you never know you go home and maybe he's not there. And at first I would go to school and I'd be really, really scared. And I didn't want to go to school because I didn't want to think that I would go and I wouldn't see him and I wouldn't be able to hug him when, in case something happened. And you try to live each day, but sometimes it's hard because the sadness comes in and you know he's not going to be here for a while. And yes, I'll have him for graduation, but what about our birthdays and Christmas and Thanksgiving? What am I going to be thankful for this year if they're taking a big part of me? Consider this. Ten-year-old Kimberly, she was born in Houston. Rebecca and Karen, they're U.S. citizens too. Celia, their mom, she's an American as well. Just not Juan Francisco. So maybe the question to think about is this. Are the Rodriguez's an American family? Are you aware that some of the deportations are hurting families, hurting U.S. citizens? Whenever I see these stories highlighted of people getting ripped away from their families in the middle of the streets and everyone's pissed off, if you get here illegally and you establish as quickly as you can and you have as many kids as you can, that means that we're going to have to keep you here. I think that that is what draws more people here. The same should go for everybody. If it's on the books as a law, you get found, you're illegal, you get deported. Uh, Y'all may be looking at me like I'm some cruel bastard for, uh, for uh, saying that, but it's, it's law and order. It sounds simple until you meet the people. Jose Escobar? He slipped across the border when he was just 14 years old. He came to join his mom. And in all the years he lived in the US, that's been his only crime. It's certainly legal to deport him, is it right? What if Jose doesn't get back here? Oh, that's not an option for me, he's coming back. The what ifs, a lot of people are telling me, what if he doesn't come back, would you go back? Would you go? And I'm like, no. I'm here to stay, my kids are here to stay. This is, this is my home. Jose is an American. He just doesn't have the paperwork that says he's an American, but he is an American. And where he is right now in El Salvador is not where he belongs. Nick Purden, CBC News, Houston, Texas.